Hello, Kevin Tharp here. Today we are going to be doing an overview of web development. And when we're talking about web development, what we are doing is we are talking about the entire process of uh, going from thinking about having a website to the point where you actually have a website that is accomplishing what you want it to do. Uh, and so this is a little bit different than the way that web development used to be looked at in that we're introducing uh, to that process as a primary uh, uh, pillar the idea of objectives. Now the reason that we need to think about objectives is that today websites are not just being created because we need a website. Back in the 90s uh, it was the new thing. It was cool to have a website. Uh, everybody was getting one, so I needed a website. And I used to ask different people, well, why do you need a website? And they couldn't tell me why they needed one. They needed one because everybody else was getting a website, and they felt that they needed one too. But by introducing objectives as a primary pillar of web development, what we do is uh, we bring in to the process the idea that we are doing this for a purpose. There is some goal that we want to meet. And, and there's different goals that we can look at. There are obviously the goals of the business or organization that is creating the website. I want to sell widgets. I want to have people sign up for my newsletter. I want to um, collect photographs or whatever it is. That, but there's almost always now some kind of a reason, a purpose for that website. And uh, without thinking about that per first, you often end up in a situation uh, kind of like uh, what we see in the screen here where uh, you've got something, but it may not be what your users are looking for. You're looking at uh, George Washington's three-seat outhouse. Now, uh, when he had this designed, it may have been uh, perfectly acceptable to have a social gathering in the outhouse, but today I think that uh, there would be a different approach to this. And that's why I use this slide. So objectives is the first thing that we look at, and then we start getting into the things that people would normally think about when you're talking about web design. Um, talking about structure, and structure takes on a number of different um, caveats. Uh, there's this th structure of the website itself. How are the directories going to be laid out? Uh, how are you going to store your scripts? How are you going to store the different things that become uh, important to making up that website? Uh, so that is sort of the, the external structure of the website. Nobody ever sees that unless they're looking behind the scenes. Uh, so you've got that kind of structure to look at. Um, you know, for instance, uh, if we're thinking from an arch architectural standpoint, you might be thinking of the neighborhood layout, uh, that kind of structure. Well, we're going to have a cul-de-sac, and on that cul-de-sac, we're going to have four houses. So that's the structure that is in place that the content sits upon. And then that's the other kind of structure that we're going to talk about. And that is the the internal structure, the, the structure within each page. And um, that would be like looking at if you were building a house on that cul-de-sac, uh, you would look at the walls, you would look at the doorways, you would look at the uh, holes where the windows are going to go. Not the windows themselves, but the holes where the windows are going to go, the doorway where the door's going to be placed, um, all of that kind of thing that allows you to later come in and put that door or that window or that sink or that uh, bathroom in place. So that's the internal structure within the individual web pages. Uh, the next thing that we've got to talk about is presentation. Now presentation, like it says on here, you need to think visual. So if we had um, using the the model of uh, a house, uh, in this case we would be looking at things like we're going to have stainless steel appliances, we are going to have um, uh, a light wood with a dark uh, grain in it, we're going to have 
uh, the floors that are uh, a darker grain wood than we're going to have of the cabinets. For the countertops, we're going to have this color. We're going to have a granite countertop or, or whatever the case may be. And the same thing with the sink. We're going to have to, within the structure that we built for this sink, we're going to put a uh, a chrome sink. It's going to have a certain type of faucet. It's going to have a, a two, um, two sink sink. Uh, and so all of those kinds of things are what we're thinking about is what is it going to look like? How is it going to be laid out within the location? Um, I want to have an L-shaped um, set of cabinets in there. And so uh, you have to uh, address that in that way. So it it's primary, primarily visual, but it also has to be very closely linked to the structure because you can't put uh, cabinets on if you haven't built the structure for those cabinets to sit on. The same thing with when you are doing web design. The next thing that we need to talk about is the content itself. Uh, what is the stuff that is going to be on that website? So uh, here you would have the actual windows themselves that sit within the structure where you built the walls and you built the location for the windows. Uh, the, the doors that go in the doorways, um, the siding that um, is on the side of the wall. Uh, now, the color of the siding would be presentation, but uh, so it's it's the stuff that you get in there. And, and I could get carried away with analogy to, to the point where it doesn't work anymore. But uh, when you're talking about the content, really you're talking about what it is that's in there. The images, the text, the graphics, the, um, the embedded movies, the forms, all of that kind of stuff. And while we're talking about forms, that brings us to the next section. And that section is the behavior. So just like we would, um, in the structure, we would build a location to have a sink. Uh, we would uh, bring the plumbing in there so that the water could get out. Um, we would decide what the uh, sink was going to look like in the presentation. It's going to be chrome. It's going to have this type of faucet on it. But then, uh, if this were the behavior aspect we were looking at, we would have to think about things like, well, we've got to have water running to that. We've got to have the, the plumbing to and from that. We've got to have water hooked up to it so that when we turn that knob, water comes out, uh, bringing it back to the web so that when we click on that form, the content that we have put into the form does something. Uh, so any time that you're uh, having the website do something, whether it's uh, grab data from a database and put it in there or run a script such as you get when you're doing a form or something like that, then what you're talking about is the behavior. And so uh, that's where your scripts and database connections and that kind of stuff come in. So um, that brings us to uh, the full uh, circle here where the first thing we talk about is objectives and where we're thinking about the purpose of the site and that comes in at the very beginning process. Then we talk about the structure. Once we understand what the objectives are going to be, we start creating the structure uh, and then we've got the presentation, the content, and the behavior that all plug into that structure once it has been built and putting those together and understanding how they all tie in together is the first step to understanding how to do website development and that concludes this particular segment.